two particles move along the x-axis in miles. So the position from 0 to 11 in hours is given by these two functions. All right, kind of crazy looking functions. And right here, these two graphs are the derivatives of x2 and the derivatives of x1. So the kind of like they're the velocity and it looks like miles per hour. So these are miles per hour graphs, miles per hour. All right, so we're going to use this all to help us solve this. How many values of t do the particles have the same velocity? So if I'm looking for the same velocity, I'm looking for the derivative of each equation being equal. Okay, velocity is the derivative of position, so I want to know where each of the derivatives, which is velocity, are equal. Since this picture is of the velocity graphs, I want to know where they're equal. It would be right there. That would be the point at which they are the same, that red dot right there. And to find exactly where that is, you would need to use technology. But for this particular question, it says how many times? And there, would, right there, you just have one time that they would be the same. But again, if you didn't, if you needed technology to find exactly what that would be, be nine point something, and you use technology to crunch that. Next, which particle stopped more often? Stopped more often. Well, if I want to know stopping, isn't stopping when your velocity equals zero? Okay, so if I'm looking for stopping, I want the velocity equal to zero, which in this situation, it is the de derivative of each function. So you want to know when does each function derivative equaling zero. So we want to know how many times this equals zero. We look at that function and it is once right there. So we know it's once right there, about nine point something. So this one has once. And if you look at the other graph, the green graph, it hits twice. So my question again says, which particle stops more often? And that would be the green graph, which is x2. x2 it stops more often because the velocity equals zero more times. Next, which particle was moving to left more often? So to find out when something's moving left, what you're looking for is when the velocity is negative. Okay, so you want velocity negative. So we look at each one and see which particle moved left more often. So let's look at each one's velocity. So if we look at um, the first one's velocity, so V1's velocity, all right, and you want to know when is the velocity negative. So if we look at V1's velocity negative, isn't it V1's velocity negative for all of that, which looks like that's about from 0 to 9.7, all right? And if I want the velocity negative for x2, Okay, I want where that's negative. It would look like it's right here and right here. So that looks like it's from 0 to 3.2, and the other one would be, looks like about 8.6 to, because we're, we're ending this one at 11, so we stop at 11. So looking at those two intervals, which interval has more time going to the left? Because again, left means negative velocities. And it looks like this one has the biggest interval so of um, space, an uh, interval at which the velocities are negative. So that would be x1, or the um, x1 um, function. Next, which particle was fastest at t equals 2? So if we look at t equals 2, it's right here and right here. So which one is fastest, fastest. What does fastest mean? What does that mean? Well, fastest means the biggest speed. So you want to know which one has the larger speed. So what is the speed? Well, speed is going to be the absolute value of the velocity or the derivative function. So what is it at, oops, let me take a step back here, and at 2. So you kind of want to see which of these two is bigger, because you're going to look at both functions and think which one's speed is larger. Well, if you think about this, what is the velocity of x1? x1's velocity, and it can be absolutely valued, looks like it's about a negative 3.6. 
where the velocity of x2 looks like it's about a negative 1.3. Okay, so you look at that carefully. Again, uh, uh, x2 is this one. See that dot right there? It's about negative 1.3. And this one is right here, which is about negative 3.6-ish. I'm, I'm just approximating. And there will be absolute value because we want the fastest. We don't care about direction. We do not care about direction. So what you'll notice here is this one's 3.6 and this one's 1 1.3. So won't x1 be the fastest? Because its velocity has the biggest value ignoring negatives. Even though this is a, big, a smaller number, it's farther from the x-axis. It's farther, the farther you are from the x-axis in velocities is the faster you are. And that's why you have the absolute values. Lastly, slowing down. When is the particle, or which particle is slowing down at t equals four? So when it's slowing down at t equals four. So to find slowing down, there's two different ways to do that. You can do the derivative of speed. Oops. Don't use v, because this is x1 prime at 4. Okay, so you, you're going to do this, and you want to know if the slope of that is, for slowing down, if you want slowing down, you want it to be decreasing. So you want the um, velocity to be decreasing or less than 0. All right, so that would be less than 0. If that's the case, we don't know if it's the case, but if that's the case it is slowing down. So let's check this and see if that is true. All right, so at four, for V1, at four is right here, and here is V2 at four. So at this point, what is happening? Well, what's the, the, uh, what is the V prime for? Looks like it is gonna be, again, negative right here, that's negative 3.2. So this is the, the value is 3.2, but I want the slope of it. Okay, this is getting a little bit trickier. So what's the slope doing? Well, we have to think about, hmm, I have to think about here, is this is saying at 4, I want the speed and its derivative. Okay, I want the slope of the speed. But the speed, if you think about the graph, this graph for speed would be actually put up here. So technically, this graph would look like it's up here which means at 4, you'd have this graph right here. At 4, you'd have a dot, and look at, look at that. The speed, because the speed graph was here, but at absolute value would put it up here, and aren't the this, aren't this speed decreasing? Isn't the slope negative? So it is slowing down because the speed is decreasing. The speed is decreasing. The derivative is negative. So that might have been a little weird, but the answer is x1 because the speed is decreasing speed decreasing and that means slowing down now you might not like that way so there's another way of looking at it and what we do is we look at the acceleration and velocity all right so if I look at V of 1 okay so look at the velocity at 4 and all I look at the signs I'm looking at the signs and then I'm also gonna find V double prime 1 at 4 and if I want it slowing down, I'm looking for opposite signs. So if the signs of the velocity and the acceleration are opposite of each other, we know it's slowing down. All right. So what is this at 4 is negative. So all I care is about the signs. So this is negative. And the slope at 4 is positive because at 4, isn't this a positive slope? So since these are opposite signs, I know that it is slowing down. If it was speeding up, they'd be the same sign. All right. So that's a little bit tricky, but I hope you can understand it. I like this one, even though it got a little bit weird how I explained it. But you have to understand speed means absolute value of velocity. So you kind of flip any values underneath upside down. And then you look at it if it's going downhill or uphill. And slowing down has to be downhill.